Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungo back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. So today I'm going to be reacting to the book of Enoch banned from the Bible reveals shocking mysteries of our history. Very interesting. So without wasting time, let's get into it. Part of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Book of Enoch is the oldest known apocalyptic writing in history. Although the ancient work deals with a biblical figure mentioned in both the Old and New Testaments, it was never intended to be included in the official canon of Christianity and Judaism. But why is that? What information contained in the Book of Enoch should not be taught in the synagogues and churches of this world? Together with you, we're looking for answers today. Before we get started, be sure to hit the like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. Also, stick around until the end to learn about one of the scary reasons why this book has been banned in many churches across the globe. Enoch to find out who Enoch was and which of his experiences were worthy of being recorded for history, we should first take a look at the official version of the Bible. However, when leafing through the holy scriptures of Christianity, it quickly becomes clear that the information available is extremely sparse. In the Old Testament, Enoch is only mentioned in passing in a short passage. The relevant passage in Genesis says that Enoch is the son of Jared. He in turn descended from Set, who was the third son of Adam and Eve. That Enoch was drastically different from normal people becomes clear when we consider the age ascribed to him. Accordingly, Enoch is said to have lived for almost 365 years. However, this incredible lifespan is nothing compared to the age reached by Enoch's children. Thus, the biblical figure fathered Methuselah, among others. The so-called forefather before the flood is said to have lived to be almost a thousand years old. The New Testament then stretches the story of Enoch a little further. The epistle to the Hebrews emphasized that Enoch was loved by God and was called up because of his sincere faith. But what does that mean? In detail, this means that Enoch was allowed to ascend to the kingdom of heaven without having to die. At this point, the official description of the Bible ends. If you want to know more about the background of this exciting figure and find out which supernatural experiences Enoch allegedly went through, you have to direct your attention to some other writings, the so-called apocryphal Enoch books. Banned Scrolls between 1947 and 1956, the Dead Sea Scrolls were rediscovered. For the history of the Hebrew Bible, this find represented nothing less than a breathtaking world sensation. The ancient scrolls hidden in various caves deal primarily with texts with religious content. However, part of this gigantic archaeological treasure was also a vast collection that would later come to be known as the Ethiopian Book of Enoch. The special feature, it's the oldest known apocalyptic writing in history. As part of their evaluation, the experts came to the conclusion that the Book of Enoch had already been prepared in the 3rd century BC. For comparison, the famous Revelation of John from the New Testament is dated to the year 95 AD. The main reason why the comprehensive collection of the Enoch story is referred to as the Ethiopian book is that the complete work has only been preserved in the ancient Ethiopian language. This in turn has the background that the Book of Enoch is an integral part of the Ethiopian church, which is in stark contrast to the other Jewish and Christian communities in the world. Nowhere else has the work been included in the official canon. But why is that? Do the scriptures possibly contain secret information that not only shakes our religion, but also our general view of the world? Let's take a closer look. Enoch's Ascension As mentioned earlier, Enoch is said to have been brought into heaven by God during his lifetime. However, the Bible still owes us an answer to the question of how exactly this ascent into the kingdom of heaven took place. The Ethiopian Book of Enoch is much more informative in this regard. 
Old divine and heavenly mysteries are said to have been revealed to Enoch during his rapture. The fall of the angels is also described in detail in the ancient collection of scriptures. To understand this, let's take a closer look at the writing entitled The Book of the Watchers. According to tradition, the angel Semyaza decides to invade the earth along with some other of these supernatural beings. The goal of the angels is to subdue human women and have offspring with them. From this mixture of earthly and heavenly beings, wild giants emerge. The giants then throw the world into chaos and arouse the deep wrath of God. So it is that the Lord in heaven banishes the angels from paradise. But that's not all. The fallen servants of God are to be thrown into a lake of blazing flames on their final day. In order to wipe out the giants from the earth, God wants to conjure up a gigantic flood. Faced with their fate, the fallen angels beg for mercy, a desperate plea that God refuses. This is where Enoch comes in. He's commissioned to deliver God's drastic decision to the fallen angels. After he's delivered the message, he's finally visited by two angels and taken to heaven. During his subsequent ascent, Enoch again gets a detailed insight into the divine realm. A glimpse into the sky. Where the expression divine realm comes from is somewhat misleading. In fact, there are rumored to be seven different levels of heaven with conceivably different residents, according to some denominational religious beliefs. This idea is also shared in the Book of Enoch, which is largely why some religions do not include this book in the Canon Bible, because no other book of the original Hebrew Bible shares this idea of there being seven levels of heaven. In every other book of the Old and New Testament, only heaven is mentioned. There is not once a mention of another realm of heaven aside from the one and only heaven, which Enoch is said to have ascended to. According to this idea, in the first level heaven are the clouds and the stars. In the level above the fallen, damned angels await their fate. The third heaven in turn houses what we would commonly call the biblical paradise. This is where the souls of godly people are brought. However, in the north of the third heaven is also hell, where sinners receive their punishments. Passing the sun and the moon, and gigantic guardians and choirs of angels, we finally reach the seventh and highest heaven. Here is the throne of God, and only a few archangels are permitted to dwell at the side of the Lord of the Worlds. According to the Book of Enoch, after arriving at the side of the Creator, Enoch is commissioned to write down everything that the Creator dictates to him. In addition to the mysteries of heaven and earth, this also includes the story of creation. In just 30 days, Enoch completed 360 books. Armed with these new writings, Enoch is sent back to earth. The books are then given to Enoch's sons. He instructs his children to renounce all sins and at the same time warns them of the approaching flood with which God will wipe out the wild giants. This information helps Enoch's great-grandson, Noah, prepare in time for the devastating flood and build his Ark of Salvation. After Enoch has carried out the tasks assigned to him, he's finally admitted to the heavenly paradise. With all this in mind, it begins to become clear why the Book of Enoch was removed from the Bible. We know that many years ago, the Bible was carefully curated by experts who decided which books were canon and which were not. This was done in an attempt to free the Bible from any attempts at fraud. After all, as writing was becoming more commonplace and more and more people were seeking to disband the Christian faith once and for all, the church needed to do something to ward off anyone who wanted to lead Christians astray. Thus, sometime around 382 AD, the Bible was combed through and the canon books of the Bible were decided upon. Books such as Enoch were removed because they didn't align with all the other books that were determined to be canon. In fact, some books didn't align with one another at all, including one non-canon book titled The Wisdom of Solomon. This has led some people to believe that the Bible as a whole cannot be trusted. This is largely because of the idea that if non-canon books can be removed, who's to say that canon books may not have been removed as well? If the Bible was curated by humans, what kept human influence from removing important books of the Bible? 
In actuality, it's clear to see that all the remaining books of the Bible perfectly align with one another and don't contradict, with a handful of exceptions that have been determined to have been the result of minor mistranslations. Aside from this, every book of the modern Bible shares the same story without incident. On the contrary, the books that were removed, now known as the apocryphal books, contradict one another at every angle and don't align with the other 66 books that are found to have been authentic. Thus, a total of 15 non-canon books were removed. So, what does this mean for the Book of Enoch? To put it simply, the book appears to have been created fraudulently. Its story doesn't align with the other 66 books, and no ancient translations of the book have been found, suggesting that it may have been written in much more modern times. Aramaic fragments of the book have been found, suggesting that ancient Jews and some Christians were aware of the book, but we have no evidence that the book was ever studied or verified by first-century Christians, as is true with most other books of the Bible. Enoch and Pre-Astronautics There are many different reasons why some people believe that the Book of Enoch was banned from the Bible. When you look at it from a strictly historical context, as mentioned, it's obvious that the Book of Enoch doesn't belong because the book doesn't echo the beliefs that are shared all throughout the Bible. Because of this, the book has been sworn off by both denominational and non-denominational churches. However, there's a much more bizarre theory that has been passed around in recent years. As it would turn out, some people believe that the book was removed from the Bible as part of a worldwide conspiracy. This conspiracy would have been shared and agreed upon by every church across the globe, and thus the Book of Enoch was removed. According to this idea, the Book of Enoch doesn't actually share religious history, but instead shares the story of a mysterious alien abduction. Yes, according to this theory, the secret writings of Enoch confirm the theories about ancient alien visitors. Remember, the parascience of pre-astronautics is based on the belief that the ancients were regularly visited by extraterrestrial intelligences. But how do God, fallen angels, and bloodthirsty giants reconcile the views of this theory? Well, this is because the pre-astronauts have a slightly different interpretation of the events recorded in the Book of Enoch. In this theory, the creatures that descended on Earth and mingled with women were not biblical servants of God, but aliens. The figure referred to as God in the Book of Enoch was in fact not the heavenly creator, but the head of the extraterrestrial species. The rapture of Enoch to paradise thus had less in common with an ascension to heaven than with a classic alien abduction. So, what Enoch saw during his journey was either the spaceship of the extraterrestrial beings or their home planet. The flood that was conjured up by God could therefore have been the result of a highly developed extraterrestrial weapon. At first glance, it seems very difficult to place the events described in the Book of Enoch in such a cosmic context. In fact, this collection of writings also contains a passage that touches on this area at least to a certain extent. Although the so-called astronomical book doesn't speak of aliens and spaceships, it still gives us an impression of how our planet and its galactic neighborhood are structured. As a result, the Earth is not an almost spherical celestial body, but a flat disk. In addition, our earthly homeland doesn't revolve around the Sun. Instead, it's the Sun that orbits the Earth. Anyone who actually believes in the pre-astronautical background of the Enoch story will sooner or later come across a central question. Why have aliens not visited us since ancient times? After all, they've made themselves known to mankind openly in the past so that they were worshipped as heavenly beings by the inhabitants of the Earth. Some supporters of this parascience believe that another visit from the extraterrestrial intelligences is imminent because they're watching us all the time. Given the current evolution of our species, the aliens may believe that we humans are in danger of wiping ourselves out. Accordingly, with the development of atomic bombs and the like, we've now reached an explosive technical age. So according to pre-astronauts, it won't be long before the currently invisible observers will put us back on the right path. Now it's your turn. What do you think about the exciting content of the Enoch book? Why do you think the scriptures were not included in the official Bible canon? Let us know your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments below. If you enjoyed our foray into the world of banned writings, 
please give us a thumbs up. Also, while you're at it, don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to stay up to date from now on. Finally, please take a look at the other videos on our channel that we've linked here for you. Thank you for watching, have a good one, and see you next time. What a video! Um, I know the book of Enoch has been excluded from the Bible, but I didn't even know any of the contents of the, the book itself. And to say 15 other books, 15 other books together have been excluded. Um, why? Why? How do you get to decide something because it's contradicting with the rest? Then who wrote these books, you know? Why were they written in the first place if they were contradicting? And I feel at the end of the day, give let people choose what they want. It's like they're keeping some sort of information from the people. Why keep that information from the people? Give them the information. Let's see what they'll do with that information at the end of the day. And uh, the seven heavens, but in Islam, something similar like that is mentioned. So, what do people have to say concerning that? That's something I'd love to know. Otherwise, I'd love to read the book of Enoch and the other books as well that were excluded from the Bible just to see what they talk about despite their contradictions, you know. And I hope others have read. And if you've read them, what are your thoughts? Please tell me what you think about the seven heavens, what you think about the aliens, what you think about the exclusion. That would be very, very nice to hear from different people. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe, and I'll see you in my next reaction video.